poetry was the, was the word of the day. You know, they used to write a few verses of poetry, go put it on the Kaaba, and say challenge. So someone else would come and try to write the next verse. And then the poet himself would give his own verses. It was competition. And because of poetry, some tribes would get elevated, and some would get them it, 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 was, it was their measure of excellence. So the Quran came, and it gave the challenge, give 10 surahs like it. And they couldn't. It's not for lack of trying. They tried, but they couldn't. You know, one of the poets, I, I say this, Bi'adab bin Jam, one of the poets, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the verses was Sama'i Dhatil Buruj came, he gave it to the Sahaba. He goes, go put this on the Kaaba. Was Sama'i Dhatil Buruj. Go put this on the Kaaba. This is our challenge. Give us the next verse. So one of the poets came and he saw this, he goes, oh, this is easy. And he ran home. You know, took pen and paper and started to write, like, you know, um, what's next? And uh, eventually he came, he wrote it down and he stuck it on the, on the Kaaba. And this is what the poor soul had written. Women are creatures with private parts. <laughs> this was his poetry in comparison to There's no, and the Arabs themselves looked at it and go, oh, no, what, what an embarrassment. <laughs> and others tried. Well, one of the classic ones uh, is Musaylima. Uh, Musaylima claimed prophethood. So he said that Allah has revealed to that prophet and he's revealed to me as well. So we are dual prophets. Um, so he came to, to Amr ibn al-As. Amr ibn al-As is one of probably the most sharpest minds amidst, you know, in Arab history. Um, a diplomat, a astute politician, a thinker, a strategist. Uh, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu arda. You know, he's the type of man that will look at you and see through you. You know, you, there, there's little you could hide from, from Amr ibn al-As. So Musaylima came to him and he said, uh, what's the latest that's been revealed on the, on the Prophet of Hijaz? Now, Amr ibn al-As is, is not a Muslim at this stage. So he goes, what's the latest that's been revealed on the, on the Prophet of Hijaz, as in the one from your tribe, because he's from, from the Quraysh as well. Um, so Amr ibn al-As said, he goes, I think it's inna a'tainaka al-kawthar fasalli li rabbika wanhar inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. So he goes, something similar is revealed upon me. So he said, uh, uh, what's revealed upon you, ya Musaylim? So he said, the surah of Tufah, <laughs> apple. So he goes, read it to me. So he said, Inna a'tainaka tuffah. Fasalli li rabbika wartah. Wada anka siyah. Verily, we have given you the apple. So pray to your Lord and relax and forget, and forget about your worries. So Amr ibn al As is Amr. You know, Amr, Amr is no child. So he said, uh, has, has a second one, has anything else been revealed, Musaylima? He goes, nah. He goes, yalla, ibda. He goes, because to our Prophet, Allah Rabbul Izzah revealed, alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. So he figured, feel is the catch word here, let's do this one. So he goes, al-feel um al-feel. وما أدراك ما الفيل له خرطوم طويل وزيل قصير. Because elephant or elephant and what do you know of an elephant? It has a long trunk and a short tail. So Amr looked at him and said, يا مسيلمة والله إنك لا تعلم 
Wallah, you know, O Musaylimah, that I know that you're a liar. <laughs> Hold on. You see, normally you tell people, you, say, you know you're a liar. Yeah, that's one level. But Amr says, I know you know you're a liar. But you know that I know you're a liar. And you're still going like shameless. So they would try, and even today, you get Christians and, um, you know, and the Arab world try to, um, to concoct and make uh, their Bible into Quranic version. And anyone that is, that is slightly learned in Arabic looks at it and goes, you know, أَيْنَ النُّورُ السُّهَا مِنْ شَمْسُ الضُّحَا وَأَيْنَ الثَّرَى مِنْ ثُرَيَّا وَأَيْنَ الْأَرْضُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Where is the comparison with this and that? So, linguistically, it was a miracle. But the age of language kind of passed. Today we live in the age of science and technology. It would be appropriate for the Quran to be a miracle in this field as well, and it is. I want to share a personal story with you, and um, I might end with this. And I said might, because something else might come up. So uh, Now I'm being honest, because I used to say this is the last one, and it never was. <laughs> So now I use the word might and we're all covered. Uh, so this is a personal story. I was a grade six kid. Uh, uh, and my teacher took me to SciTech. You know SciTech, oh, it's called SciTech. It's called, I think it's called the planetarium now. That, you know, that big little doimish stuff that you drive by the freeway, you see it. You know, SciTech, I went there. And they showed us... Uh, you know, science and uh, the stars and all that. And then a lady was doing a presentation. Uh, I was a young kid, grade six. And uh, she got a balloon. And inside the balloon, she had filled it with little, uh, you know, the punch holes things, you know, those little paper cuts inside there. And, and the balloon was full. And then she got a needle and she went poof, like that. And it burst and all the little stars went everywhere. And she said, this is how the universe was created. <laughs> like the Big Bang. Now, I started Hivs very early on in life. And um, I had read the verse, you know, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wal that Allah Rabbul Izza created the seven heavens fi sittati ayyam in, in seven consecutive days or periods of time. And, and so when this person said that, I was like, <laughs> no. Uh, but what's a, what's a great six kid gonna say, you know? So it, it annoyed me, it really did. Oh, you know, I, I, we came from a very conservative upbringing, so uh, I, I was very unhappy. So I, I came home and it kind of went into, into the back burner, I, you know, I, I forgot about it. And then I was watching uh, the news, I remember it like today, it was in my uncle's house. And the news came on and they said, the discovery of the decade. And uh, so, you know, discovery of the decade is not discovery of today. So, you know, I paid attention to it. And they say it is confirmed that the world is made from the Big Bang. And I was like, oh, you know, that the world is made from the Big Bang. So the, what the lady had said, the, the birth, it was correct. But I still didn't know enough to. So um, I grew up, I, I went to uni. And in uni, my, my, you know, my research started. And uh, I came across this verse, and I want you to listen to it. Qala subhana. So actually, first, what, what's the Big Bang? Um, so what they did, right, is they got uh, infrared radiation, and they bounced it at the, at the celestial bodies, you know, at the, at the different planets and, and things that, that are flying about in space. And they noticed that each time, it takes it longer to come back, which means it's expanding. It's moving further and further away, because it's traveling further and further each time it comes back. So naturally, they figured if it's gone out there, if you rewind, it comes back to one point. So everything must have been joined together, and then it burst apart. So hence the Big Bang. So they said the discovery of the decade. So everything joined together, burst. So I, I, I'm, I'm researching, and I came across the verse, Qala Subhana, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Do not the unbelievers see أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا 
Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and earth were all joined together and we burst them apart? Big bang to the dot. Yeah? Everything was joined together and we blew them apart. And then he continues, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ And from water we made everything living. Everyone is unanim you know, unanimous consensus that water is the source of life. You know, so when they look on Mars for life, they don't look for, you know, aliens walking, they look for water. So if there's water, there's probably life there. And the Quran mentions it 14 and a half centuries ago where man had no clue. Like, how would a person in the desert walking sheep come to the conclusion that you see that there's whole heavens? They were all joined together. They were zero volume. Fafataqnahuma and we burst them apart. And um, for those and I, I, I met a person at school and he said, This verse made me a Muslim. Like when I came across it, what else are you gonna say? He says it to the letter that I, I i everything was joined together, and only the creator will know how it came about at that time without any of the modern technologies. You know.